My best advice to incoming students is to be open and to stay open. 
the students I love are the ones I meet in, you know, before they've made a decision even. And they'll meet me in sort of a, a fair university fair or on a visit to the campus. And I'll, and I'll say, what are you interested in? And they'll say, no. <laughs> they have no idea. And they're so scared to admit that they're not sure what they want to do. And, and then I'll meet someone that will give me an answer. But, and, then, and then I can see that that's not really, that's literally the thing that they've been saying over and over. And so the advice is, here you had the opportunity I didn't have, that I fought for, which is a place where you can take a different direction. You can come in thinking you want to do one thing, and it's not impossible in that first year to just experiment, open up, see what other things you can do. We encourage that. You know, did you, were you always interested in philosophy? Take a class in philosophy and see if you like that, right? What about a language? You, you, you really wanted to understand a bit more about indigenous language and culture? Take a class. We're not committing to that, but what you're doing is remaining open to the idea that this could be something that I love. And you can mix it up here. It's so much easier. You don't have to fight. You can say, I want to do this weird thing and that weird thing, and, and it can come together. From the beginning of a class to the end of a class, if I can have students see in themselves and reflect, my, I grew so much. That's what I'm interested in. What did you learn about you? What did you learn um, about your capacity and your ability? For me to send them out of the university with that kind of confidence and the ability to understand they may not have met something, a new app, a new technology, it doesn't matter. They're, they're, they know they can face it and they've dealt with it before and they, can, they will deal with it again and they will succeed. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. Thank you all very much for joining us from wherever you are in the world right now. Uh, we're very happy to see so many people interested in the University of Toronto, Mississauga. My name is Connor Savory, and I am a student recruitment officer here at UTM. Uh, and I'm also joined today by my friend Rohit. Uh, Rohit, if you'd like to introduce yourself. Hey everyone, my name is Rohit. I'm a student ambassador at the Student Recruitment and Admissions Office, and I'm going to be your tour guide for today. Awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, we're also joined today by my friends Deborah, Sandra, and Daniel, who will be in the comments section keeping an eye on any questions that you folks may have. Uh, for those of you who are new to the University of Toronto, I'm going to be giving you folks a very brief introduction to the university, and then I'm going to call Rohit back on screen to lead us through a virtual tour of our campus. Uh, at the end, we'll be going through some of the questions that you have for Rohit. So this is a great opportunity for you folks to explore our campus through the eyes of a current student and to chat with us about his experiences. Before we begin, just because I know that we have a lot of international students joining us today, I wanted to briefly highlight that uh, we also have a lot of events coming up which are targeted specifically towards international students. In particular, uh, for those of you who already have an offer of admission, uh, I'm very excited about an upcoming event that we're hosting with the International Education Center next week on March 29th, where we'll be walking you through how to apply for your study permits alongside some of our immigration professionals. Uh, to explore these events and more, you can visit our website. We are uoft.me slash UTM future. Now, to begin our presentation, we would like to acknowledge the land on which the University of Toronto operates. For thousands of years, it has been the traditional land of the Huron-Wendat, the Seneca and the Mississaugas of the Credit. 
Today, this meeting place is still home to many Indigenous people from across Turtle Island, and we're grateful to have the opportunity to work on this land. Now, as many of you may well know by now, the University of Toronto is Canada's top university and Canada's flagship university for research and discovery. We enjoy an incredible reputation for our academic strength, our leadership in every discipline, and for the cutting edge work that we do in the lab, in the studio, and in the field. Not only are we Canada's top university, but we're also the country's largest university with nearly 200 academic departments and institutes and the largest selection of courses which are spread out over three different campuses. All three of our campuses has something unique to offer, but the important thing for you to remember at this time is that at all three, you'll be getting the same world-class education and graduating with the same University of Toronto degree. Our Mississauga campus in particular is located in Mississauga, Ontario, just 30 kilometers to the west of downtown Toronto. We're home to just over 15,000 undergraduate students who are studying in the arts, the sciences, and business. From our 12 different admission categories, you'll be choosing between one of 180 different program options, meaning that you'll have a wealth of opportunities available at your fingertips. Here, you really get to reap all of the rewards of studying at Canada's top university while also enjoying that intimate, mid uh, excuse me, intimate, personalized experience that you get from a closed, mid-sized campus surrounded by nature. Now, the University of Toronto, uh, Mississauga has a lot to offer our students and consequently, students choose to join us for a wide variety of different reasons, including the opportunity to learn uh, at a world-class institution while also studying at an innovative contemporary green campus, um, our unique and dynamic programs, some of which cannot be found at any other U of T campus, uh, the wealth of opportunities that we provide for you to get involved, develop and build relationships, our abundance of student supports, which have been designed to meet you where you are. And of course, our truly global community, which has attracted students from 110 different countries all around the globe. So these are just a few things that you may want to consider as you begin to think about where you would like to continue on your academic journey. Now, as you folks can probably tell, I could go on and on and on about all of the wonderful things that make our campus and our community great. But luckily, we have the incredible fortune of being joined today by one of our current students. So with that, I'm going to call Rohit back on screen to give us a virtual tour of the UTM campus and talk to you a little bit more about our school and his experiences as a student here. Uh, so Rohit, I'm going to hand it over to you if you want to get things started off. Sure. So hi, everyone. My name is Rohit. I'm a fourth year international student from Bangalore, India. I'm currently pursuing a major in applied statistics and a double minor in mathematics and political science. When I first applied to the university, I was admitted to the computer science, mathematics and statistics program. In my first year at UTM, I stayed at the McGrath Valley residence. And in my second year, I stayed at the Lee Cock Lane residence. In my free time, I enjoy playing football or soccer. And I also play the electric guitar. In my experience, university can be quite different from high school. In India, especially, <clears throat> the education system is centered around the final exams. But in a Canadian university, you have regular assignments and quizzes that make up a significant part of your grade. Living away from family is a shift as well, and having to be more independent. I think residence is a good experience for students as they live with others who are in a similar situation. It's a great place to make friends and get adjusted to that university life and life in Canada. Awesome. Thank you very much, Rohit, for uh, giving us the chance to get to know you a little bit. Uh, so with that, let's begin our tour at the Kneff Center and Innovation Complex. It should be noted that while departments are building specific, students can have classes in any building regardless of their program. The main lecture hall in this building is KN137. It seats about 300 students. I took Economics 100 in my first year. I took it as, as an elective just to explore another field to see if it was something I wanted to pursue. And UTM really gives students that freedom 
in terms of what courses they can choose. I took a political science course in my second year out of interest, and I enjoyed it so much that I just ended up minoring in political science. So don't be afraid to venture out of your plans and explore a little bit. Next up, we have the Office of the Registrar. So they help admitted students with course planning, financial planning, and academic advising. I've had several of my questions about course planning answered by the Office of the Registrar. I usually book an appointment with Ron, one of their academic advisors. They have many academic advisors, and Ron has been my advisor since first year. They also have an online platform called Ask Registrar, which is a convenient online way to connect with the Office of the Registrar and advisors. Awesome. Let's uh, take a step outside and move along to the William G. Davis building. As a student, you will spend a lot of time in Davis. We have a big food quarter with many different eating options, catering to all sorts of dietary needs, such as vegetarian and halal. The meeting place is a casual hangout spot for students to grab a bite in between classes or just hang out with some friends. I usually go to Thai Express, where I alternate between the fried rice and the noodles. And if the lines are too long, sometimes I'll just grab a slice of pizza. If you opt for a meal plan, it goes onto your university ID card called the T card. And at that point, it basically becomes like a debit card, which you can use at any of the different eating places on campus. You can also use it at the vending machines and the photocopying machines. The Career Center is also in Davis. They support current students looking for jobs, whether it's on campus or off campus. They have a portal called the Career Learning Network, where students can actually look at the different available job postings. They also help students with resume writing and conduct practice interviews. I personally took advantage of their resume writing service and I found it pretty helpful. I found and applied for the posting for my current part-time position as a student ambassador on the career learning web network. As an international student, I'm allowed to work a maximum of 20 hours a week and my supervisor very understanding to work my shifts around my course schedule. Also located in Davis is the bookstore where you can get all your course material. You also have the option to buy used textbooks or rent textbooks. You can get lab, lab, sorry, you can get lab equipment such as lab coats, and of course you can get all the U of T merch like hoodies. We also have the International Education Center in Davis. The IEC supports students with all things international, such as study abroad programs and exchange programs. They also assist current international students with the transition to university and any questions related to study permits, visas, and post-graduation immigration status. Since I'm graduating soon, I reached out to the IEC to inquire about work permits and Canadian citizenship. Uh, awesome. Uh, I'm really glad that you took the hot time to highlight some of the great resources that we have and how we've taken advantage of them because we really have packed a lot into this one uh, big building. In particular, I really like that you highlighted the International Education Center and how they've helped you not just with things like your study permit as a student, but also in understanding things like your post-graduation immigration status now that you're graduating. I know that we have a lot of international students in the audience today, and I think it'll be really good for them to uh, know that we have a bunch of or a lot of dedicated professionals here to support them from the day that they accept their offer to U of T all the way through until you graduate. Uh, so with that, let's move along to our Recreation, Athletics and Wellness Center, which is also attached to the Davis Building. Gym membership is included in the incidental fees that students pay, and as a result, you have access to all the gym facilities. The Rock has two gyms with basketball courts, weights equipment, an indoor running track, and a swimming pool. Students can play sports casually, as well as compete in intramurals and varsity blues. I use the gym quite regularly, and I play football and table tennis as well. I'm also a part of the table tennis club here at UTM, and they host tournaments each semester, which are pretty fun to compete in. Awesome, let's keep moving along to the Communications, Culture and Technology building.
So CC1080 is one of our biggest classrooms and it's also in the CCT building. It seats about 500 students. So just to give you a rough idea, our biggest class here at UTM seats 500 students and the biggest class at St. George can exceed a thousand students. So our campus is mid-sized and it's actually one of the reasons why I chose this campus. It can be a bit intimidating at first to ask questions in such a big environment, but professors are very friendly and you can always approach them later on in office, in office hours. I actually took a forensic science course in this room. The professor Wade Knapp was actually was an ex-police officer, so it was quite interesting to hear about uh, forensic science from his previous experience. I also took a visual culture course in this room, which was pretty fun because it was something different from all the mathematics and computations I was doing in my other courses. So typically in your first year, you will have at least one or two classes which seat 500 students. This is just because in your first year, everyone is required to take the same introductory courses. And as you move on to your upper years, you start specializing in a certain field and your class size naturally decreases. Thanks, Rohit. Uh, let's walk down the hall and carry on to the Hazel McCallion Academic Learning Center. This is where you'll find the UTM library. It offers study spaces that students can book to study independently or work in groups. It's one of U of T's 44 libraries, and as a U of T student, you will have access to all of them. If there's a book that you want, which is at one, one of the other libraries, you can always request them to send it to UTM and loan it out from here. You can also borrow a laptop, a charger, or a calculator. The library is open 24 seven during exam season, which is super convenient. And of course, there's a popular Starbucks right outside in case you need that caffeine kick to study or if you just want to take a break and hang out, hang out with some friends. Great. Uh, so let's step outside and head on over to the Instructional Center. This building is mostly lecture halls and smaller rooms upstairs for labs and tutorials. We have the two biggest classrooms in this building, IB 110 and IB 120, which see about 500 students. And like I said before, you will typically have at least one or two classes here. We have some eating options in this building as well. We have Subway, Quesada, which is a Mexican food option, and Bento Sushi, a great option for Japanese food. Finally, we have the UTM shuttle bus. It's a shuttle, but it's a bus that leaves, for, that goes from this campus to the St. George campus and is completely free for UTM students to use. You don't have to use the bus for academic purposes only. If you ever want to go to Toronto to, just to explore or have some plans, the shuttle bus is super convenient and safe way to get there. I've used the bus a number of times to go meet some friends in Toronto. On average, it'll probably take you about 45 minutes, but on a good day, you could get there in 30 minutes or so. It's super convenient and reliable since there are no other stops along the way. Yeah. I'm glad that you took the opportunity to uh, highlight the UTM shuttle bus in particular. I think a lot of students might be interested in studying at the Mississauga campus, but maybe they're worried that they'll be a little bit isolated from the city of Toronto itself. It's really good to point out that we're really only 30, 30 to 45 minutes away uh, and that our students have unlimited access to this free shuttle service nearly every day, which will take you straight to our St. George campus in the heart of downtown Toronto at no extra cost. Uh, so with that, let's move along to Manjue Nendamoanan. Nendamoanan. <laughs> So this is an indigenous name that's associated with the building and it means the gathering of minds. It's also our latest building here at UTM. This building has tons of study spaces and is a popular place for students to book study rooms. We have a different type of classroom in this building called the active learning classroom. It consists of tables of four to five students and 
each each table has its own whiteboard on which the prof professor slides or notes are projected. Each table also has its own mic in case you need to ask or answer questions. So typic to, typically, the professor will put up questions on each board and students work in groups to answer these questions. And the professor just walks up and down to see how everyone is doing. So you can see how this is a bit different from a typical lecture hall. I had a computer science course in this room and a couple of math courses as well. And it was a lot more interactive than a, a, a lecture hall, per se. A lot of movies and TV shows were actually filmed at UTM. Just to name a few would be Titans, The Boys, uh, Zombies 2, and Good Sam. And I was just casually watching a few of these shows when I noticed some familiar buildings. And after rewinding multiple times and doing a bit of research online, I found that, uh, that it was actually shot at UTM, which is crazy to find out that way. And this picture right here is a picture of the set of Zombies 2, uh, which is a Disney movie getting filmed a couple of years ago. Awesome. Uh, let's head next door to Deerfield Holland. This building has the departments of computer science, mathematics, and statistics. We also have labs for computer science and psychology. So the professors for computer science, mathematics, and statistics have their offices in this building. And office hours are really a, re a great resource that I believe are highly underused. It's an opportunity for students to ask their questions directly to the professor, usually in a one-on-one -on -one environment. And it, it can sound intimidating to have to go up to a professor's office I too never used this resource until my second year when I had a lot of questions in a, about a course and well, who best to answer them but the professor. The math, math help room is a great resource for students to get support from teaching assistants and sometimes professors. We also have a secondary Starbucks and the Northside Bistro in this, in this building. Great, let's head on over to the student center. The Student Center is the hub of student activities on campus. Any cultural event usually happens there. Right outside the Student Center, we have a small convenience store called the Duck Stop where students can get groceries and snacks. Upstairs, we also have multi-faith prayer rooms. The Student Union or Student Government known as UTMSU is, is also situated in the Student Center. They're responsible for helping students access academic and social resources and services. We have about 150 clubs here at UTM. I'm a part of Harmonix, a music club, and they often organize casual meetups and jam sessions. We also have the university's newspaper office called The Medium. And they, they are interested students can always reach out to them uh, and submit articles. One of my friends actually has had multiple articles published by The Medium. Most recently, he wrote about how the shift to online learning has impacted him. Students receive a My Way bus pass using which they can ride any of the Mississauga city at any, sorry, I'm gonna start that over. Students receive a My Way bus pass using which they can ride any Mississauga city bus at no additional cost. They can get the My Way bus pass from the front desk at the student center. They also have a free bike rental program. Uh, here's a picture of a time when I used their bike rental service to go play football at a nearby park. Finally, we have a pub called the Blind Duck and I, I should mention that the wings at the Blind Duck are pretty good. <laughs> Thanks, Rohit. Uh, so let's wrap up our tour in residence. So I lived in residence for two years and I loved it. I've lived in three of the six different residence communities on campus, and each one is unique and has its own style. So coming to university can, without knowing anyone, can be a bit daunting, and residence is a great place to make friends. Everyone in residence is also new to university life, and you'll meet people from all over the world. 
it's a good idea to be part of the Facebook groups, join Eagle Connect, and make friends before you come to university. Through Eagle Connect, you will have the opportunity to meet other inbound students, and you will get an email about this later. I think the convenience factor for residents is a huge advantage. Ha having classes just five to 10 minutes away from home is quite nice, especially in the winters. You also have quick access to the gym, the library, and the food courts. And residents also organizes many events throughout the years for students to be engaged in their residence communities and have fun. The Coleman Cup is a tournament amongst the different residence communities, and it includes events such as sports, board games, and trivia. So that's the end of our virtual tour. I'm not going to hand it back over to Connor. Awesome. Uh, thank you so much, Rohit, for the excellent tour. Uh, I'm going to ask you to stay on screen for the question and answer period. Um, you know, there's a million different ways to learn about the University of Toronto Mississauga, but it's always great to get to hear about it through the perspective of a current student. Uh, so for those of you listening, if you're interested in exploring UTM in further depth, we have a wealth of resources available to you at uoft.me slash discover UTM. Here you'll find our future students blog, upcoming events, recordings of program spotlights and discover UTM sessions that we've hosted in the past and much, uh, much more. In particular, I'd like to once again emphasize that we're working very closely with our friends in the International Education Center to create a variety of different events uh, for international students who've been admitted to UTM uh, to help you navigate your transition from high school into university. Uh, in particular, once again, I wanna highlight that event that we have coming up next Tuesday on how to apply for your study permit. I think it's gonna be a fantastic and very informative session. Uh, so you can find more information and sign up for these events, once again, at uoft.me slash discover UTM. I'd also like to take a minute to highlight our virtual campus tour, which is a fantastic sister component to today's event. And you can find it at uoft.me slash UTM tour. Uh, here, you'll get to explore the UTM campus at your own pace. Uh, it features 360 degree panoramic views, uh, images, videos, and a lot of really insightful information. Uh, and it goes really well with uh, the presentation that we've just heard from Rohit today. Uh, so with that, I'm going to take a look through the questions and see if we've received um, anything for you, Rohit. Uh, in the meantime, I want to encourage everybody listening right now, if anyone has any questions for Rohit about uh, life at UTM or his experiences here, uh, please do not hesitate to share them in the chat. Uh, we would love to hear from you. Uh, so let me just take a uh, quick look here. Some of these, it looks like I'm going to be able to answer as well. So I think that we'll be able to um, pass back and forth between the two of us. Uh, but we'll start with uh, the first one, which is about the library. Are there any uh, time-related restrictions on when you can use the library at UTM? I think you'll know that one. So I think the regular, during regular, the, the regular season, as they call it, would be early in the morning to probably maybe 10 or 11 at night. And like I said before, during exam season, it's open 24 seven. Um, you can just stay as long as you want. There's no sort of time restriction. Awesome, thank you so much. Oops, uh, I have one for me. I'll see if I can just pass it back and forth between the two of sure. us. Um, a student asks, does UTM give out offers in April? Uh, yeah, that is a great question. So offers of admission to the University of Toronto Mississauga are continuing to go out on a rolling ongoing basis. Uh, we started going uh, sending them out a month or two ago, and they'll continue to go out on a regular schedule through until the month of May. Once an admission decision has been made on your application, we will notify you via email. So you will be notified regardless of whether your uh, application is admitted or not. Uh, really good question. Thank you for asking that. Uh, and we have another one. I think we went over this a little bit earlier, but Rohan asks, is the shuttle service included in the fees? So yes, it is included in the fees. So you don't have to pay any additional amount whenever you use it. And yeah, you just have to show them your university ID card and you're good to go. Yeah, perfect. That's all there is to it. Uh, I didn't know about this shuttle service when I first joined uh, the UTM community, but I think it's such a great resource. I talked about it a little bit earlier, but uh, in my opinion, I think students who are studying at the Mississauga campus really get the best of both worlds. 
uh, you really get that experience of being at a, a kind of smaller, closed off campus. You get that, <clears throat> excuse me, you get that proximity to uh, nature with all of the beautiful green space around us. Uh, but once again, we're only a half an hour away from, you know, the largest city in Canada. And you've got that free shuttle service, which will take you back and forth whenever you like. Uh, so let's see if there's anything else here. Um, ooh, this is a good one for you, Rohit. Uh, so Nippon asks, did you have any challenges with uh, the change in weather from coming over from India? That, that's a good question. I was, that was probably my biggest concern coming to university, um, how I was going to adjust to the weather. Um, but honestly, the first winter was an experience because I never actually experienced winter. But after that, I think it was pretty fine. You just need to invest in invest in some good uh, clothing, I'd say. Yeah, that's great. And the one thing that I will add to this, uh, an international student taught me this, uh, but it made a lot of sense to me. So I always tell students, uh, if you're coming over from a warmer country like India, make sure to wait until you get to Canada to buy your winter coat. Uh, when you come here in September, it'll still be summertime, so you won't be cold, I promise. Um, Winter coats that are sold in Canada are made for Canadian winters. I know that you can buy like ski jackets abroad in different countries. It's probably not going to be warm enough. Uh, but Rohit, thank you for uh, sharing your very candid response about that. Um, let's see, what else do we have here? I'll take this one from Lily. Lily asks, after accepting an offer on the OUAC, when can we expect to hear from UTM regarding admissions and fees? Uh, so that's a really good question, Lily. Uh, first and foremost, if you've accepted your offer on, on the OUAC, it means you have an offer, you've already heard back about your admission. Um, in most cases, this is going to be a conditional offer of admission. So there will be some conditions on your offer that must be satisfied in order to uh, maintain your admission to UTM. Uh, so if you take a closer look at the join portal, and in particular, if you look closer at um, the offer letter that you'll find on there, you'll find all kinds of details, both about those conditions, as well as when they need to be met by. Uh, once you have accepted your offer on the OUAC, that is when we will begin communicating with you as an admitted UTM student. Uh, so you can expect to hear from us consistently throughout the spring and summer with any um, need to know information. Uh, in particular about your fees, uh, your fees are generally posted after you've already enrolled in your courses. So course enrollment for first year students begins in July. Once again, we'll be in touch with you um, later on in the spring and summertime with more uh, specific and up-to-date details about when and how to enroll. And in particular, I wanted to highlight uh, that we also have a variety of sessions coming up to support you with this, um, including uh, sessions on um, you know how to enroll in classes. Uh, we're hosting workshops. And then our academic advisors are also going to be hosting uh, drop in enrollment advising hours just for our new first year students to help you with that process. Uh, thank you very much, Lily, for the question. So let's see, what do we have here? Um, ooh, uh, Dan, Rohit, have you been to the other campuses? I think you visited them, right? I've visited St. George. I haven't been to Scarborough. All right. Uh, so I'll ask you this one and I can probably answer this one as well. Uh, so Dang asks, uh, what are some things that you love about UTM that the other two campuses don't have? So I'd probably say the, the green space, as you mentioned before, we are literally surrounded by greenery all over. Uh, and sometimes we see deer on campus as well. Um, that's something I really like. And I, I think it's size really. Um, I didn't see myself fitting into such a large environment. So that's why I chose this campus. Uh, and it's a nice community feeling in a sense that wherever I walk on campus, I always see familiar faces. So that's something I really like about the campus too. Yeah, really, uh, you took the words right out of my mouth. I would say those are my, um, I had a very similar experience to you. Um, first and foremost, uh, yeah, being around that green space, for me at least, that's something that I really value. I find it has a very positive effect on just um, my stress levels and my my ability to cope. Um, I, I find it really valuable when you're having a rough day to know that you can just step outside and within five minutes, uh, you can be taking a walk through the woods, kind of disconnect from everything that's worrying you. Um, but in addition to that, probably uh, one of the things that attracted me to the UTM campus is that uh, it is what we call a closed campus. 
Um, so if anyone here has visited our downtown campus, the St. George campus, you'll know that it's uh, what we would refer to as an, uh, an open campus. So our buildings are kind of spread out around that central core of downtown Toronto and interspersed are other buildings, offices, apartments, etc. cetera. Um, here at the Mississauga campus, it's closed off. So it's one plot of land that has just UTM campus uh, buildings on it. And what that means is that it's very, very walkable. You can get from one side of campus to the other in about 10 minutes. And because there's no other businesses or anything in between your classes, uh, pretty much everyone who's on campus is a part of your community, which uh, really goes a long way, in my opinion, to uh, contributing to that sort of close-knit community feel that uh, Rohit, you mentioned. Uh, ultimately, uh, as I touched upon before, all three of our campuses has something unique to offer, but at the end of the day, you're getting that same world-class education and you're graduating with the exact same University of Toronto degree. So for those of you who are maybe thinking, you know, I want to go to U of T, I'm not sure which campus I want, I would encourage you take a look at the three campuses, see if you can sign up for a campus tour either in person or virtually because we are doing both. Uh, it's a really great way to kind of uh, get a feel for what the campus environment is uh, like and decide, you know, where do you see that you might be able to fit in for the next four years of your life? Uh, so thank you, Dan, for that question. Uh, what else do we have here? Let's see here. Let's see. Let's see. Which one do I want to pick? Um, here, let's start with this one. Uh, I think that I'll pass this between the two of us. Uh, so Siddharth asks, uh, in first year, in case of initial teething challenges in academics, what are some go-to resources? So first and foremost, I think I'd like to ask Rohit, you know, what was your experience like in first year in terms of um, adapting to uh, the kind of the different unique challenges of university study compared to secondary school? Mm -hmm. that, that's a great question. So I think the biggest challenge for me was managing my time. Um, you know, in university, you're independent in the sense that you make your own schedule. Um, so you're really responsible for how you go about academics. And I think time management was a skill that I had to learn uh, in university. Um, but once I mastered that, you know, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, it doesn't seem too hard. Um, in terms of go-to resources, I'd say if it was academics, you, could, you can always go to tutorials which are a good place to ask questions. And like I mentioned before, officers, um, which is something that I didn't take advantage of in my freshman year, but I should have. Yeah, uh, I'm really glad that you mentioned that. And in particular, the office hours, because uh, when I was an undergraduate student, I was the exact same as you. Um, I remember, I, I don't know if it's the same for you folks in India, but at least here in Ontario, I think in high school, there's a lot of teachers who like to tell you, oh, you know, in university, your professors don't care about you. They don't care if you pass or fail. Uh, Rohit's laughing because it's, it's really not true at all. I was so scared of my professors when I came to university, but ultimately the people who are teaching you have dedicated years and years and years of their life studying that subject because they love it so much and they're working this job which has pretty tireless hours just because they really enjoy sharing that passion with other people uh, so take full advantage of those resources like office hours it's a great way to get to know your professors build a personal connection uh, and of course answer any questions that you might have about the course content uh, but on a more general scale um, i want to take a moment to highlight our robert gillespie academic skills center um, they host a wide 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 variety of programming which is designed to help um, our students both as a first year student as well as throughout your undergraduate studies so they're hosting some programming to help you um, make that transition from high school into university and learn new study habits but then throughout your your sort of undergraduate career they're hosting workshops on things like um, academic writing uh, and so on and so forth really just um, ensuring that you have a resource there to help you develop some of those I don't want to say soft skills, but some of those skills that you maybe won't pick up in a classroom, but which are going to help you on a more general, broad sense across all of your different classes. And then on that note, one last thing I'll end with is that uh, while I know that university study can be a unique challenge, 
Um, you should know that everyone who's coming into first year is in the exact same situation as you. We all know, uh, the professors know very well what a challenge that transition can be. And the university as a whole is doing everything that we can to help make that transition as smooth and painless as possible. Uh, so I have a quick one here I'm going to highlight from Aditya. So I'll take this one, uh, sure. Rohit. So Aditya asks, can students get scholarships between years, uh, for example, between first and second year? Uh, so this is a really good question. Um, so many, likely many of you are already familiar with our entrance awards, which are awarded to incoming first year students, typically based on your grades in high school. Um, but as Aditya asks, we do have a wide, wide, wide variety of different uh, scholarships which are available to students in your upper years as well by application. Um, we have, in fact, uh, we have our own scholarship management platform I'll highlight first and foremost, uh, which is Award Explorer. I'll ask one of my colleagues to share a link in chat um, where you'll find thousands upon thousands of scholarships which are offered just to U of T students. Um, beyond that, there are a lot of other resources here in Canada, which are open to um, Canadian students from a variety of different universities, including Biconic.com and ScholarshipsCanada.com. Um, in the end, uh, ultimately, yes, there are thousands, and I really do mean thousands of scholarships available to students um, in your upper years, which are based um, on really anything. Uh, it could be based on your academic performance, but then it could also be based on other things like um, community involvement or athletics or um, culture and heritage. Um, the list is endless. Um, the last thing that I'll leave you with before moving on from this question is that many of these awards go unclaimed because nobody applies to them. So I strongly recommend uh, take a look through those resources to explore some of the scholarships available because it can be uh, it can really pay off. It can be very lucrative for you. Uh, thank you, Aditya, for the question. Uh, let's see. Oh, this is a good one. Uh, Abhishek asks, how are the class hours usually? So you can talk about this one. Sure. So like I mentioned before, it's really <clears throat> up to you to how to schedule your courses as well. So typically each course will probably have maybe two or three different uh, time slots or time postings. And you can just choose whichever one um, suits you best. Um, and yeah, it's more of how many courses you take and how you align them. So class hours can vary per day. So yeah, I don't want to give out a rough estimate really. No, that's okay. It's tough. Uh, when What times of day do classes start and end, Rohit? I think you'll know that. So I'd say most of them start at 9 a.m. Uh, with the earliest. And I think the latest class that I've heard of uh, ends at 8 p.m. or 9 p.m.? I'm not too sure. No, that's okay. Um, that's I ask because that's something that I really like to highlight, that your day's schedule can be really quite different from what you might be used to in high school. Yeah. Um, coming from secondary school, most of us are used to having the same schedule every single day. You'll come to school, say, at 8.30, and you'll be in class all day until, say, 2.30 in the afternoon. Um, in university, your schedule can vary widely and it can end up being very, really quite different. Um, class hours, just on a more general sense, most students are enrolled in five classes per term. In general, a class is three hours per week, so you can expect about 15 hours per week of class. Uh, this probably does not sound like very much coming from secondary school, but um, recognizing that your classes are probably going to take a little bit more um, effort outside of the classroom, working on projects and assignments, studying, doing assigned readings, and so on. It really is a full-time commitment, uh, and you can find that your schedule can vary widely. But on the other hand, that's one of the perks that you can really customize your schedule to a format that uh, suits you best. So uh, when I was a student, for example, I did my best to avoid morning classes as much as possible because I like to sleep in. Uh, I had other friends who did the opposite because they liked to have their afternoons to themselves. Um, lots of flexibility. Um, You'll see once enrollment opens up for you, what kind of options are available to you, but it's a great thing to start thinking about is now that I have this much control over my schedule, what works best uh, for me? Thank you very much, Abhishek, for that question. I like that. Um, Nipun asks, any suggestions on purchasing or borrowing books for first year? Um, 
Right. So from the bookstore, they usually have all the books that you need. Um, and through the Facebook groups, you might actually be able to connect with some upper year students and um, maybe ask them for their books. Um, for, I think I connected with the senior in my freshman year to get a, to get a math textbook. Um, so yeah, there are different options for that too. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you, Rohit. Um, that's another thing I'd like to highlight just as a uh, recent university student uh, myself uh, is my biggest piece of advice is wait until your first class before buying textbooks. Uh, sometimes the professor will give you alternatives if you can't afford the textbook or don't have it. Um, some classes you're going to find that you have assigned reading nearly every week and you might decide that you really need a textbook. Uh, in other classes, maybe it's just being used for uh, homework questions and you might find that it's perfectly suitable for you to pool your money together with a couple of friends and just share a textbook. Or um, maybe the professor will tell you that a textbook from a couple of years ago is still good. Uh, so you can find it on the used market as well. So there's a lot of options available to you. 99% uh, of the time, you will not need your textbook on your very first day of class. Wait for that first day and listen to hear what the professor has to say, uh, because uh, it, it can be a great way to save a little bit of money. Uh, so thank you very much for asking that question. Uh, now, Rohit, have you done any kind of co-op or uh, professional experience in your program? Uh, no, I haven't. All right, so we can skip that one. That's okay. Uh, let's see here. Um, I have one that I think that I can answer. Uh, so Nipun asks, uh, will there be any online classes for students for the first few weeks if our visa does not get processed on time? Uh, that's a really good question. So. Um, the first thing that I want to say on this question before I even answer that is uh, make sure to apply for your study permit early. Um, the earlier, the better. As we all know, it can take a little while to get that processed. Uh, as I covered, if you already have an offer of admission, we are hosting an event with our International Education Center uh, next week on how to apply for your study permit. Um, but beyond that, I recommend students, if you've got questions, contact the IEC. Uh, we have immigration professionals who um, specialize in immigration to Canada who can help you with that study permit process because I know that it can be a little bit complicated. It's certainly not something I would feel comfortable advising on. Um, so apply early, get it out of the way. Um, you'll feel a lot better and hopefully it should arrive on time. You can make it to uh, Toronto on time. Uh, that said, uh, as to your question, will there be any online classes? Uh, it's difficult to say right now for sure. Uh, as you uh, can likely imagine, over the last two years, uh, we had pivoted a lot towards the online model because of the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, currently, we are in the process of moving um, all of our classes back to in-person learning to the extent possible. Uh, now, it's difficult to pr uh, predict what this fall will look like. Ultimately, it will depend on the advice from the university and from public health officials as well as the government. Um, but our aspiration, uh, what we hope is that we will be able to offer all of our classes uh, fully in person as usual. So uh, I would expect or I would plan to be uh, fully in person uh, come this fall. Really good question. Thank you. Uh, let's see here. Um, ooh, this is a really good one for uh, you, Rohit. I really like this one. Uh, so Devyani asks, uh, when I was going through UTM-related YouTube videos, there was an undergraduate student who was describing how frightening it is about test days uh, and that they're very frequent. Uh, is that true? Okay. So firstly, um, each course ha probably has a different um, sort of schedule. Some courses might only have assignments. Some courses might have midterms and assignments. So again, depends on the course. So the frequency might vary. Um, and in terms of frightening, well, it is challenging to be part of uh, such a well-known university. But of course, you can get over it. And there's so much student support for you to assist you on that note. Um, so if there's mental support as well as academic support. So yeah. You yeah. Take it over? yeah, sure. I'm glad. I'm really glad that you mentioned um, the um, mental support that we have. Um, obviously, mental health is something that's very important. We do offer um, supports through our wellness center for our students. Um, but just to get back to the, uh, the, the question at hand, 
Uh, Rohit, you know, really uh, gave a great answer that it depends a lot on the courses that you're taking. Uh, so I had some classes where I was doing regular quizzes. I have had other classes where um, most of my grade came from a lot of really small assignments that you can complete in an hour or two a week. So it, it varies a lot. Um, Rohit answered the question really well that, of course, it's going to be challenging. Um, you know, ultimately, university is meant to challenge you. That's the purpose of university. Um, and, you know, it is going to be an adjustment. That said, you know, we've already talked a lot about the supports in place, both through our academic skills center and also, uh, you know, from your instructors, you know, through your office hours with your professor, as well as your regular tutorials, teaching assistants. Um, but the last thing that I want to say to students who are maybe a little bit nervous about coming to university, um, you're right, it will be a challenge, but we know what our students are capable of handling. If we have looked at your application and we have looked at your um, high school transcript, if you have received an offer of admission, what that means is that we have looked at you and we have looked at your academic performance and we have said, yes, we think this student is capable of handling the workload at university. We think that they are well equipped, not just to uh, barely scrape by in university, but we think that they're well equipped to succeed. Uh, so ultimately at every step of the process, right from the day we receive your application, we really want to be uh, building successful students. Uh, it's in nobody's best interest to let in students who um, aren't capable of handling it. And it's in, not in our best interest to let you in and then throw you out into the wild and let you struggle. So uh, we're looking for students who we think are going to be a good fit for the university. And we have all kinds of resources available to help you with that transition as well. Uh, thank you very much for the question. Um, let's see, what else uh, should we cover? I know that we only have a couple, um, couple other, uh, a couple minutes left, excuse me. So I'm trying to be a little bit picky here with it. Uh, let's see, what do I want to pick? Uh, this is a kind of a quick one that I can actually answer. Um, the student asks, uh, I want to know how competitive your program is. And as an overall, um, if you're over the expectation, if you can expect a full scholarship. Uh, so we won't get too much into uh, competitiveness because it can vary so much from program to program and even from year to year. Ultimately, all programs at the University of Toronto are competitive. The fact of the matter is that we are the top rated university in Canada and one of the top ranked universities worldwide. All of them are going to be competitive and we do have a very high standard for our students. Uh, as to whether you can expect a full scholarship, uh, unfortunately, that isn't really uh, something that you can expect in most cases here in Canada. Um, there are a few uh, niche scholarships which are going to be an exception, um, but once again, that really is the exception rather than the rule. Uh, that said, you know, as I touched upon before, there are thousands of scholarships available out there. Um, through personal experience, I have known people who have earned more money in scholarships than the cost of their education just from receiving a lot of smaller ones. That doesn't mean it's guaranteed by any um, stretch of the imagination, but it uh, goes to show you that there is really a lot of money and funding out there for students who need it and that uh, a little bit of hard work um, early on to apply for those scholarships can really pay off. Uh, that's a really good question. I'm glad you that you asked that, so thank you. Um, I think that we're uh, running out of time here. So I think we're just going to do um, one last question and then I think that we can uh, wrap it up. Actually, let's uh, do this one real quick one last time. I can handle this one. Um, student is curious to know more about study permit and the residence experience at UTM. Um, you know what, Rohit, why don't you talk a little bit more about residence and then I can get into study permits a little bit. Sure. So like I said, residence is really a great place to make some friends. You, you know, everyone else is there. Everyone else is new as well. So you're all going through the same sort of experiences together. Um, on top of that, the first week of university is it's called orientation week. or And residence organizes a bunch of events, um, which are really fun. Um, and you can just hang out with your community and make some new friends. And on top of that, there's also uh, events that uh, center of student engagement uh, plans 
So there's really a lot of events in that one week, um, and you can really make a lot of friends um, throughout the throughout those weeks. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, thank you for touching upon um, your own experiences. That's great. Um, on a more general level, uh, we have the widest selection of uh, residence options at U of T here at the Mississauga campus. Uh, so you can end up in a traditional style room, an apartment, or in a townhouse. Um, the important thing that I want to flag to you folks, other than all of the wonderful perks like Rohit covered, as well as the fact that you're always just steps away from your next class. Um, important thing that I want to point out is that our residence application is two parts. The first part is just to express that you're interested in residence. There's no financial obligation. And that first part will be due on March 31st. Uh, so for those of you who are just starting to think about residence, if you haven't already, I strongly recommend that you complete that first step of the residence application at residence.utoronto.ca. Um, to, to go back to study permits, uh, once again, the International Education Center is going to be a fantastic resource. I'll ask one of my colleagues to share a link to their website with some general information. Um, but beyond that, they're hosting a variety of different uh, sessions to help you with navigating that. Uh, the next one is coming up next Tuesday, March 29th, um, where they will be joining my colleague from student recruitment um, to go over how to apply for your study permit. Uh, but beyond that, we do have trained professionals who are experts on Canadian immigration who are there to help you. Uh, so thank you for so many questions about study permits, because it really uh, is something that's really important to get a head start on. I always recommend that. Uh, so with that, I think that we're going to wrap up the presentation uh, for today. So I just wanted to thank everybody very much uh, for joining us today. Thank you, Rohit, for the wonderful presentation and for chatting with me with some of these questions that our students have asked. I also want to thank my colleagues, Deborah, Sandra, and Daniel for all of your help in the comments. And of course, to all of you, our guests, for joining us today, sticking around and listening to us talk. Uh, I really hope that you enjoyed today's session. I hope that you found it informative. Uh, remember that you can follow us on social media. We are at UTM Future. And if you have any further questions, please do not hesitate to contact us. Uh, we always really love speaking with our applicants and our incoming students, and we would be more than happy to help. So thank you all again. Have a wonderful day, afternoon, evening. Uh, we wish you all the very best of luck, and we hope to see you again soon. Bye-bye. See you, everyone.